Hi everyone and welcome back to the workshop. Now, my name is Peter and in today's video we're going to have the long overdue chat about the Model 8 executive that I've been using in my shop for a little over two years. But before I continue I just want to say the following and it's if you dare to dream and you can turn that dream into a design with a lot of hard work, dedication and passion you can make that dream a reality. How do I know that to be true? It's exactly what I did over two years. I am not trying to sell you a machine and I'm not trying to sell you a dream either. I'm a designer. I prototype and manufacture components for my customers. And this is our story. It is all in our hands. It is all in our hands. It's quite hard for me to believe that this journey of using the executive to do my work has already been two years. So I don't want this chat to be about technical specifications. I would rather just tell you how the machine performed over this period of time and what the future holds for the executive and myself. So if you want to know more about specifications or about accessories, please feel free to visit the manufacturer's website, which is 5.0 Robotics. Then there's Tony CNC, uh, BG Precision, they are based in Australia and Nordic CAD. Um, I'm sure if you reach out to them with your queries and your questions, they'd be more than happy to help you in that regard. So now that's out of the way. Um, I had a look at my teaser video where I said that this machine is phenomenal and I am sticking to that, but I also think that apart from being phenomenal, it's a turnkey money-making machine. And I don't want that to come across as cheap. I'm not trying to say, uh, take this piece of five euro wood uh, that cost five euro and turn it into 5,000 euro. Um, that's not what I'm trying to, to, to say here. My point is that this machine, um, you can wheel it into your workshop, you plug it into an outlet, uh, you have UCCNC running, with your, um, with your CAD CAM file from Fusion or whatever software you use. And within an hour of receiving the machine, you can really start to make money. I just feel when you pay a significant amount of money for a machine like this, um, you, you really want to get the best value for money that you can. And um, that's exactly what I got with this machine. As a matter of fact, um, you know, sometimes when we buy something, especially expensive equipment, um, sometimes manufacturers, they, they overpromise and underdeliver. And my whole experience with the package of the executive, um, I think it was um, underpromised and overdelivered because this machine, I think, did way more than I thought it could um, in the beginning when I got the machine. But I'm also aware that you can't make um, this kind of video after a month or two about this is how good the machine is or this is my experience because you're still in that honeymoon phase of getting a machine where everything is honky-dory um, there's no mechanical breakdowns, no electrical issues, um, no issues whatsoever. But it's all, only after about a year um, of using a machine um, on a daily basis or quite extensively that these little issues starts to show and I am glad that I postponed this chat um, to two years because this machine has now seen thousands of hours of cycle time and I have really um, pushed it just about in every direction I can um, from uh, the material I processed to the products. I made some very interesting and fascinating um, components over the last two years. Um, some which I showed, um, others is unfortunately under NDA that I can't show and those were actually the interesting ones. But um, apart from that, um, the machine performed flawlessly. Um, you know, as I said, the specifications on the website, I think doesn't do it complete justice um, if I look at what I got out of it. Now, as I said, I don't want to go into the specifications 
But I also read a lot of comments about um, a VMC is better, I should get a VMC. But the harsh reality is that for me to afford to buy uh, a VMC that has the same working envelope, and I'm going to round it off, it's 1.2 meters by 600, um, is going to cost me maybe six times, maybe seven times what this machine, the actual price of this machine. And then there's also the maintenance. Um, and if you have a crash, it's quite expensive. If, if you crash a spindle on a VMC, um, your pocket will definitely know it. Apart from that, um, I can plug this machine into any wall socket um, in my workshop. I have a 150 euro, it's about seven, eight years old compressor in the back of the shop. This is essentially, it's a double garage, it's a little bit bigger than a double garage, which doubles up as my workshop. And I can still park uh, my car if I want. And that is really the beauty for me, is the flexibility that um, a machine like this offer, um, that you, you can wheel it around and work basically from anywhere if you want. When I don't make videos, I would buy my stock in 1.2 meters by 600. And then I will nest all the components that I have to make and I will machine them. Well, obviously I load my QTC tools up for the specific job um, and I um, will do the offsets and I'll start to run the job. Now I'll tape my stock to the table. Sometimes I'll um, bolt it down to my fingers of my spoiler bolt and I'll machine away. And the beauty about that is I don't need a vise. Um, I can walk away and after an hour, let's say an hour, I come back and all my components has been profile cut and is ready to take off or to charm for or the next operation or whatever. If you watch one of my very first videos I made about the machine two years ago is when I installed these fingers and I'm still using the same ones. So they are now about three years old because I've used them before. Um, I mounted them on the executive and I still, I'm still using them. So the cost, the initial cost of the aluminium, um, is, is, is just the, the productivity far outweigh the initial cost of the actual stock. Then um, I would like to talk about the spindle. Um, this is really a, a torque monster. Um, it goes up all the way to 18,000 RPM. Um, it's the HSK40. Um, I, I really like the QTC, the quick tool change. Um, it is such a step up from the actual manual tool chains. And if you're considering this machine, um, I would really, um, I would recommend that you look into spending a few extra euros uh, or dollars um, if, you, if you can and upgrade from the MTC Technomotor spindle to either the HSK, HSK 40, this one, or the HSK 32. Um, it's a little bit smaller, but that one goes all the way to uh, 24,000 RPM. This, in my view, is, is a, a, the best investment you can make when you buy this machine, apart from the servos. Turning to my right, this is my new machine um, that I that had delivered. It's about a week ago. Um, it was delivered to my shop. And it shipped directly from Estonia, uh, from 5.0 Robotics. And I left it in the crate, so on the pallet, so I can show you what to expect if you buy a machine from them and it is shipped to your location. Now, it is very well um, packaged. Um, it actually had another sheet, a plastic sheet on top. Um, I had to remove it because otherwise um, it was not see-through, you couldn't see the machine. Um, the reason I went for the 24K RPM this time is on the symbiosis, um, I also have the same or similar spindle. And many of my single flute and two flute tools um, starts to perform extremely well um, around about 21,000 um, RPM. Um, yeah, um, I am not the kind of person who likes to go extremely hard um, on my equipment. Although I did, um, I did test this one, I went through cycles of pushing it really hard with deep um, depth of cut and a fast feed rate um, to see how, how well it performs and what it did with tolerances. 
but as a general rule I like to go a little bit more shallow with my depth of cut and then I'll, I'll, occup uh, well, I'll run a, a, a higher feed rate um, so I'll, I'll step it up let's say from 5000 um, millimeters per minute to let's say to 8 or 9 um, that, that's kind of where I'm going with this I would like to try something else uh, it has a little bit less torque but I know the spindle quite well so I, I think it's going to perform very well if it doesn't, I'll just go back to the HSK40, which is the 18,000 RPM, because this, this has proved itself um, over the last two years. For the last year, give and take, I've been supplying Stony CNC with um, media for the Instagram page and also for YouTube. It's the same post, it's just duplicated. But if you question if this machine is capable, if this machine is capable of um, keeping tolerances, or repeatability uh, please go to the Insta Instagram page um, it, it has I think something like 700 posts that's been made over the last year I've machined aluminium as I said in all shapes size and forms from a, a, a one millimeter tool all the way to 16 millimeter four flute I've been there I've done it um, then on PE 500 um, 80 millimeters thick um, EV700 epoxy board, I made loads of things in epoxy board then every kind of wood natural composite you can think of I've done, I've done peak um, um, polycarbonate, uh, perspex, acrylic, anything from that range I've, I've done on this machine and I am, I'm extremely happy with the results I got you know I I was thinking before I started making this video about anything negative I can say and, and, and I really I can't and I'm being very honest here. Um, the whole experience from the machine being shipped and my dealing with 5.0 robotics um, has been it's been has been it's been such a nice journey for me. Um, I actually had this machine shipped to Stony CNC workshop um, in Dublin. Um, from Estonia because it was the first machine I bought from them I wanted to make sure um, I actually wanted to do my PDI my pre-delivery inspection there for in case there's something wrong um, obviously there wasn't and so I, I had now I had full confidence for this machine to be shipped to my to my location um, so I know it's just going to be wheel it off and start to work you know I'm going to leave you with that thought it's phenomenal and it's, it's definitely a money-making machine, um, as I've seen over the last two years. I am so sorry for the interruption, but it's only after I reviewed the footage that I realized I, there's a couple of things, important things, I didn't talk about. The first being speeds and feeds. Now, I didn't mention that. It's because I didn't want to stand here and say, yes, you can feed a, a 8 millimeter tool, 3 millimeters deep, uh, 5,000 meters per minute at... 16,000 rpm I have a lot of footage on the Stony CNC Instagram page where I actually do list those um, it's a personal thing and you can also follow the manufacturer's recommendations when it gets when it comes to those things I normally fo follow my own my own route but I have um, a lot of posts listing those second thing is uh, wall and floor finishes once again I have many posts where I show the wall and floor finishes I I'm, I I left that out by design as well because I didn't want to try and convince you um, listen th those are exceptional um, the evidence is there you can just have a look for yourself the third thing is vice and I do use a vice I just don't use a vice for my first operations um, and that's once again it's for the specific work I do and the customers I service um, my first ops normally glued down or I bolt it down second third and fourth I will vice up my components do I need a 2, 3, 4,000 euro vice currently? Currently, Absolutely not. This does for me exactly the same job. Um, and that's where um, I stand with my vice. The last thing and tend to one the most important thing, and I value the DJ deck, as I call it, at the same level as upgrading from MTC to the QTC spindle and servos on the exec. This is a direct... Um, direct overdrive for your spindle speed and your feed rate uh, it plugs into the controller you don't need a plug-in number one and number two it's not USB so it is stable 
You know, sometimes when you program and you didn't account for a clamp that's halfway between two rapids and it starts to move and yeah, it's the end of your tool. Um, I've saved many tools that way. You know, we all make mistakes. Um, so I've saved many tools that way. Um, stock, you know, it's just, I'm sure I've saved my spindle a couple of times as well by, by just silly mistakes we make. We forget to set the Z at the right height. Um, and then you have it at 100%, it feeds in and it just sinks all the way. I've saved many, many jobs um, that way with the DJ deck. Um, I also, where it's very handy for me is when a tool starts to go dull and, you know, it has that resonant sound, um, I actually tune that out. You know, it's that one tool that you have, you don't want to get rid of it, but you can't use it for finish, but you would rather use it for, for let's say, for uh, adaptive clearing or, or whatever, for some roughing. Um, I, I, I use those tools and I tune that resonance um, I get out of this. Apart from that, you know, I've seen people say, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know how to program. And contrary, um, you know, on something like a DMG Mori or a Haas, you also have those overrides. Yeah, some people don't use it as extens extensively as we do. But this has proved it so much to me that I, I, don't, I don't think I have to try and convince anyone that this is just a brilliant addition to the exec. So if you're planning or you're thinking of buying the executive, I would highly, highly recommend that you look into getting the DJ deck. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this gave you a bit of insight into the, how, the, how the machine work. Go to the Instagram page, uh, watch for yourself, see for yourself. Uh, what this machine is capable of and I'll see you in the next video. It is all in our hands, it is